How are you everybody? This is O Sensei Joe at American Jiu Jitsu Centers. This is a video that we're doing today on Kota. We have made a video similar to this one in our first run of tapes. We have tapes that go from yellow belt all the way to 43 black belt. They are live buried on American Jiu Jitsu LI Facebook group page and also our YouTube page is American Jiu Jitsu LI. Uh, and also our Gmail is American Jiu Jitsu LI. AJJCenters.com is our website that'll give you all the virtual codes to do all our virtual training. Uh, the first run of tapes that we made are more of a review of tapes for people who train in the American Jiu Jitsu system. These tapes, we decided to go back and get a little bit more technical on the teaching so people who are not a part of American Jiu Jitsu can get some training. Whenever we teach submission technique, like I said on the other tapes, it's like we're drawing a weapon. We're pulling that weapon, we have a full magazine and we have a whole bunch of bullets in that, but we don't necessarily wanna pull the trigger. We feel good enough that the presence of the gun could stop the situation. So a submission technique is that, okay? Now, the difference with this technique is we can submit the person, we don't have to do much damage to them, but this technique takes the person down to the ground. The, the, the submission requires taking the person down to the ground. So we, we feel now this level of teaching right here for this category is it's starting to elevate a little bit more. So instead of putting a person down that we could do with an arm bar a little bit more gentle, this has a little bit more snap to it called the Kota Giyash. The Kota Giyash is when we take three fingers to the base of the thumb and we take the thumb by the last two knuckles and we twist it. We have two variations. We have Kota Giyash, which is the main topic today. And we also have what they call the Kota Giyash Maki. When I get to that, I'll explain a little bit detail. And we have a reverse Kota Giyashi, which means that we go underneath. You have to have enough to unravel a person to do a Kota Giyashi. I'll explain that during the tape. So everything that we do here, we will end up bringing the person down to the ground. That's part of the technique. Um, and it's a little bit more of a higher level technique uh, than straight up submission, simply because it ends up in a throw, all right? So if you're working with somebody, they are, need a requirement on how to fall. Um, I think I, I, I thank Kathy and Billy for being here today. If I didn't, we'll thank them twice, so what? All right, but we're gonna be working on this right now and uh, explaining to you the next five or six techniques in this video. All right, so let's look at the first one. The first one is the reverse Kota Giyashi. So what happens is, because he's in tight on her, he can't do a Kota Giyashi. Right now, if he tried to do a Kota Giyashi, he would get all jammed up. So what he does is he goes underneath the hand, grabs three fingers around the base of his thumb, checks that free hand and make sure he can't get hit by it, and now look, here's where the lead comes in. Boom, brings it right down. He can take his hand right there, extend the arm bar, and he has what they call a reverse cultivation. Let's see that one more time. So from here, he has the punch, he's timid, but he can't just turn and do a cultivation. So he takes, he goes underneath the person's arm, brings her down, locks her up, and then there, here comes another time, here comes an arm bar. So now we're tying in those arm bars that we did in the last couple of tapes, and we're combining them with the reverse Kota Giyashi. Now there's, here, here comes the regular Kota Giyashi. You gotta create some type of distance here. So what's gonna happen is Shion's gonna step back into a Tazabaki movement. He's gonna deliver a kick with her. So on a high punch. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. oh yeah, so before, my, my mistake. So before we go on to that one, what if you're in tight and you can't unravel or you can't go underneath? or the person is very tall. So what's gonna happen here is Shion is gonna drop down to one knee. He's gonna deliver an atemi right to the person's groin, which is gonna drop the person's hands there. And now he's gonna do a straight up Kota Giyashi, but he doesn't have to unravel the person because he's changed the level. So watch this, he throws the punch, boom, and there's the hand right there from here, and he takes it down, and boom, there's the Kota Giyashi. Now you gotta understand something. Somebody, a uh, common question is, what if the hand's not there? Well, if the hand's not there, he can cut the leg and bring the person down. What do I mean by that? He goes down, okay, from here, and the hand's not there, he can just bring the knee to back to the knee and bring it down, or he can cut the leg like we do in basic hip ponds. There's a million different options. Or he can just take an uppercut and strike it right into the groin. So again, the what if questions we welcome, but you're not here in front of us, so the what if questions could run off into a tangent and just take up all of the time, when if you just be patient and wait, or if you've been training, you already know how to answer that question. I always ask the person when they ask me a question, is it you're asking me the question to see what I would do, or you don't know what you're doing? And that's okay. If you don't know what you're doing, that's what I'm here for. If you're asking the question because you're questioning my technique, that's not okay, because I'll do it to you and I'll show you how good it is. All right, it's not a threat, that's a promise. All right, so from here, let's look at that technique one more time. He drops down, 
boom, there's the hand because you hit it in the uh, groin area, and now from here unravels that hand, puts him down, and submits the person there. Could actually break the person's wrist or hold the person in submission. Again, we're pulling the gun out. Do you have to pull the trigger or not? Depends on the situation. Now we're gonna create that distance. So he's gonna, she's gonna throw that high punch. She's gonna step back to a cornering movement called the Tazabaki. He's gonna deliver a kick, and then he's gonna fan the hand around, and there's where he's gonna have that elongation do that kokiyashi. So from here, bang, he does the kick off that high wedge, and then from here, fans around. Notice how it creates wonderful lead and off balance, so she's extended, and that makes that cult again, she works just perfect. The person's here, they're gonna fight you, but if they're extended, they're not gonna be able to fight you. So you never wanna do a cult again, from here, because the person's gonna fight you or punch you. But once the person's hand's extended, that's where a cult again, she works, okay? So let's look at that one more time. From here, high wedge, he kicks, creates that distraction, creates that lead, and like, boom, takes that person right down. And that's not a fake fall, by the way. You might not fall so good if you don't know how to fall. She does know how to fall, but we really don't care how you fall. We do teach what we call a street fall here. A lot of the Akido falls, very big falls. Some of my guys like to fall that way. It's a beautiful way to fall. Uh, I don't think people in the street are gonna fall that way unless you get lucky. So we try to gear it that they fall similar to how they're gonna fall on the street. So when we follow up with some submission techniques that we're not thrown off. Uh, but it's not to judge or to criticize the hockey because they're wonderful martial artists and we all evolve from the same system anyway. They just fall a little bit more what I call traditional. Uh, and it looks really cool. All right, so let's look at the next technique from a straight punch. He's gonna walk around to the outside. He's gonna arm bar the person and now he's gonna put a cult together. So now we're kind of entwining the arm bar and the cult together. So he throws a straight punch. Here's the arm bar. He continues to walk straight back to elongate her. Bang, there's your Kota Gyesha. Again, you gotta have that person off balance and leg, and that's what happens. So he opens it up with the Kota Gyesha, with the arm bar, and then moves into the Kota Gyesha one more time. From here, walks to the outside, steps back with the left leg, and bang, there's your Kota Gyesha, and there's your submission. Beautiful technique. Now, the next technique is going to be a Kotegeyesh Maki. Now, Kotegeyesh Maki is a very brutal technique that we usually teach at a higher level, but we introduce it to here. Also, at this level, most of your blocking has been what we call with a forward stance, where we step forward and we put our hand up or we block, and we call that a stance to use to receive force. What happens after black belt is we, we feel that you've programmed enough to realize that most people, when they first start training, they wanna move back. But the problem is you're moving into the source of the power. So what we do is we recondition the way you think a little bit to make you to move in because that's actually the safest place to be. After that's kind of become your muscle memory, after black belt, we start to say, okay, now that you're confident about moving in, now let's move in with a tazabaki. And we do that slowly and methodically throughout the basic system so when you get to second degree, you feel confident in it. This is one of the first places we actually introduce this. Uh, What's gonna happen here, and it's a great technique against a weapon as well, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna go in with that Tazabaki in block. We're gonna attempt to cancel out that free hand, but now we're gonna slide underneath the person's hand and maki, or wrap Kotegiesh, but we're gonna wrap it with the person's hand, and that's why it's called the Kotegiesh Maki. That's why when you go to a, uh, a Japanese restaurant and you order a maki roll, it's because it's called a roll. All right, so let's look at that technique. So. He, she throws a punch, he goes in with the Tazabaki, strikes, goes underneath the arm with his right hand, feeds it to his left, and then from here, snaps back. This is a brutal technique that could take the hand like a chicken wing right off, a boat, right off the, the breast of the chicken wing. All right, it could be very nasty. And what's beautiful about this technique, in this basic level, we teach you to do exactly what Shihan Billy did. But you can go 180 degrees with this, you can go uh, take them right back, you can step back and, and literally take his arm right off his body. So it's a very combative technique, uh, but let's look at it one more time. So from here, as he throws the punch, boom, from a basic standpoint, he comes up, he feeds it to the hand and just steps forward, brings it down gently. All right, because if you don't, you're not gonna bring it down at all. She's just gonna, uh, she's gonna go down, her arm's gonna stay up here, and this is gonna be a mess. Kota Giesh Maki. All right, so this is the tape that we did on Kota Giesh. It uh, sits at blue black in our category. Uh, we have references, like I said, on the early part of tape, American Jiu-Jitsu LI YouTube, Facebook group page, and my Gmail account. AJJ Centers is our, AJJCenters.com is our website for all our Zoom codes and our virtual training. Uh, we're looking for a July 15th opening. We're not sure of that date, but we're hoping phase four. Uh, we are ready at the dojo. Uh, we are all, uh, 
ready for uh, people with spacing on the mats, if you can see that behind me. Downstairs, we're all shielded. In the spin room, all the bikes are enclosed. So uh, we're ready. We have great air filtration and the place is spotless, as always. Uh, we also have outside lobbies. So we have lobbies in the back, lobbies in the front, so you can all sit outside and enjoy the beautiful weather. Stay safe, get out, but still stay safe, okay? And we don't want anything to raise. We don't want any numbers going in the opposite direction. So stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, watch these videos for now. Uh, contents, learn, questions, you can email me. Uh, again, thank you, Kathy and Billy, for, for uh, doing all these uh, videos with me. And we will see you on the next tape. Couldn't do it without you. We're just waiting for the approval date. And as soon as we do, we'll see you real soon. Have a great day, people.